I took all of these pictures in Lake Louise in just one single day. So my first location this morning is of course the Lake Louise shorefront. And as you might just be able to see behind me, you can see the Lake Louise canoe docks just there. And I've actually arrived about 45 minutes before sunrise to get some blue hour shots. And the reason this is a great little location is because the light's always on in that hut behind me and you get some great reflections below. So I framed up a composition just over there, just shooting through the trees to get a bit of foreground with that hut in the background and the reflection. So I think that's gonna be my first shot of today. So after grabbing those blue hour shots, I moved round to what probably is the kind of bucket list shot of Lake Louise, that iconic kind of rocks in the foreground and then the beautiful reflection of uh, Victoria Glacier. And we got probably about five minutes or less of a bit of color on the glacier and in the clouds. And I just about in a bit of a rush managed to grab that. But one of the best spots to look for on the shorefront around there is just looking for a pattern of rocks that kind of go into a triangle. And if you line those up properly, you can kind of line them up with the mountains on either side, like Mount Fairview, and then get that triangle pointing towards the glacier at the back. And that just adds to a really nice composition and a kind of a really good balance between the background and the foreground. I always like to throw in a bit of a focus stack there as well and focus on the rocks and focus on the glacier behind. And from that viewpoint, you don't really get any people in it, which is always a bonus. Another great tip to grab a few photos is at this time of year in September there is quite a nice little bit of yellow foliage around the edge of the lake. So I actually walked around the edge, kind of got a few shots using that in the foreground and also just here with the uh, canoe docks behind me. But what I would say is it is so crowded and busy at Lake Louise now that there are certain areas that you just can't really use the foreground like you used to be able to. Like for example just before the canoe docks there's a wooden kind of walkway and everyone sits on there right at the front which as a photographer is a bit of a shame people sit so close because it does kind of mean it rules out all of that foreground. But what I will do is show you a picture I took during COVID when there was nobody here and show you how you could potentially use that foreground if it was a bit quieter. So the second location of the day is going to be at Mount Fairview Lookout. This is Mount Fairview just up here and about a 20 minute walk up, there is a little lookout that looks back across the lake. So I'm hoping there won't really be many people up there and we can get a couple more shots uh, before the sun gets too harsh. Hopefully this cloud's gonna keep it at bay, but it's 8 a.m. and I've already got probably three or four shots I'm pretty happy with. This is Fairview Lookout and just behind me here you can see the Chateau Lake Louise kind of reflecting in the water below and as you can see that's nice and turquoise now as well. What I'm hoping for the majority of the day is that there's going to be quite a bit of cloud because I'm going to be shooting all day during what would be harsher light but hopefully the cloud will keep that at bay. And what I'm thinking as that cloud is moving the 10 stop neutral density filter and, and long exposures are going to do a lot of the hard work for me today kind of making those shots a little bit more dynamic as we go on. You might be able to see that there is a little bit of a construction unfortunately going on just by the hotel and a big crane right next to it. So we might have to see what Photoshop's new remove tool can do to get rid of that. But I'm gonna frame up a shot and grab a long exposure just off of the uh, viewpoint here. That's location number two ticked off. I think I've got a couple of shots I'm pretty happy with there. It's always worth getting to this viewpoint in the morning, 
just so you still get those reflections. Once the day warms up and the sun comes out properly, that lake will start to ripple, so you will lose some of those reflections. So it's a really a case of the early bird catches the worm here. Location number three is the Lake Agnes Trail. Now obviously the end goal is Lake Agnes, but behind me is Mirror Lake. The full trail is about three and a half kilometers from Lake Louise shorefront. And at about 2.8 kilometers up, there's Mirror Lake that you see behind me here. Now I don't think this is necessarily the best spot, but I am gonna try and take a quick picture here. I'm gonna try and use a long exposure to get some cloud movement and hopefully maybe a bit of reflection in the pond behind me. And then after that, we'll finish off the trail and huddle up to Lake Agnes where I know there is some great photography. Lake Agnes Trail continues uphill, passing several waterfalls. And I almost didn't stop, but after seeing the gnarly roots and the yellow foliage, I just had to grab a picture. The end goal of the Lake Agnes Trail is obviously Lake Agnes and that little tea house just down there. Now you've seen pictures taken from the tea house side of the lake with those kind of towering peaks reflecting in the lake below. But it is also worth kind of walking around the edge of the lake here and shooting back towards the tea house. You've got a few mountains as well as the tea house just behind there that reflect in the lake. I think I need a bit of a longer lens and unfortunately I don't have the neutral density filters for my 70 to 200 so I can't get that kind of cloud movement but I'm gonna try a bit of experimentation with the 35 mil with the filters on and the 70 mil. So I'm just setting a shot up for that. But afterwards, location number four is gonna be just up here on the top of the big beehive. Essentially just walk all the way around Lake Agnes, all the way around here, and then all the way back up there. It's about a kilometer and a half from here. And I think I should be able to get some shots from up there as well. It's always hard to avoid the crowds when shooting in busy places, but this shot really is a testament of just how good Photoshop's new AI remove tool is. So that is location number four ticked off, the top of the big beehive. It is a bit of a slog uphill up those switchbacks, but definitely worth it. If you're not up for that bigger walk, the little beehive just over the other side of Lake Agnes is also worth checking out. It really is worth coming up high though, later in the day when you're at Lake Louise, because the higher you get and the sunnier it gets, normally the bluer the lake looks. And from up here, what I'd recommend is grabbing out that 70 to 200 mil lens and just taking in some detailed shots of the lake below. So location number five is going to be the plane of the six glaciers. I've never actually really shot from up there before, so I'm interested to see what I will get. Unfortunately, it's about five kilometer walk from the little beehive, so it might take an hour or two, but it's about five kilometers that way. Now 
this is the top of the plane of the six glaciers and location number five. I was hoping to get some good shots actually back towards Lake Louise that way. Um, but the weather's coming in a little bit, it's getting a bit windy, looks like it might rain, might not have paid off. I'll still try and get some shots, but even if I can't get anything, it is a worthy hike if you're in the Lake Louise area to come up here and just enjoy being amongst some of these epic mountains. location of the day is back at Lake Louise, but at the far end. I was really hoping to shoot the Chateau Lake Louise with some of this kind of yellow foliage in the foreground and get some light on the mountains behind it or the, where the ski resort is. But unfortunately, sunset today is a bit of a bust. It's just too cloudy, but it's kind of the nature of these things and it's just sometimes how it goes. It's actually really worthwhile shooting from this end of the lake in winter. During winter, obviously the lake is frozen and you can stand right in the middle and line up your shot a bit better with the Chateau Lake Louise. In fact, I've got a picture I really like from winter that I took a few years ago that I'll pop up on the screen for you. I just really like the soft winter light with the Lake Louise ski resort behind the hotel. As I continued down the lake, the sun set and the lights came on in the hotel. In the end, I decided it was worth a picture after all. And that's all the locations for today. I don't think some of those pictures maybe turned out quite as well as I hoped or those locations weren't as good, but that's kind of the fun thing about doing these one day challenges is that I'm shooting in the conditions that I've got and I'm not there for the optimum sunrise and sunset all the time. But I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please subscribe and please like the video. And hopefully I'll see you on the next one.